Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you had a lovely lunch. Welcome back to this afternoon's session here in the Sydney Meyer Asia Centre, Melbourne University Entertainment Thunderdome, such as it is. My name is Richard Feidler. I'm from ABC Radio. I present a program called Conversations with Richard Feidler, a long form interview program that's broadcast here on uh, Radio National and on local radio across Australia. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations as the traditional custodians of the land on which we're gathered today and we pay respect to their elders, past and present. This session is titled Growing Brains, Capacity, Intelligence, Resilience. How can we create the conditions for every individual to flourish? What are children's brains capable of understanding? My word, that's a good question. Do we underestimate their resilience and the positive effects that surviving adversity might have? Research tells us that early intervention for children with quality education and psychological development is so important when it comes to fostering healthy, intelligent and happy adults. We've got an outstanding group of speakers for you now this afternoon to approach these questions from all kinds of different angles based on their research and their life experiences. You'll hear today from Ian Stewart, Nick Allen, Lee Waters, Neil Levy and Garang Dutt. I'd like to introduce the first speaker to make his presentation now. It's Ian Stewart, who's a retired science teacher formerly of Ithaca Creek State School in Brisbane. Ian taught physics and chemistry at year 11 and 12 high school level in various states and countries for 25 years. He developed teaching methods to, advance, to teach advanced atomic theory, advanced atomic theory, and this is something normally only taught to upper high school students, and he was teaching this at year three level and upwards. The success of this program has met with community and media support, and his goal is now to spread this method across all Australian schools. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first speaker, Ian Stewart. Thank you, Richard. Um, my proposal has three legs. Firstly, our primary school kids are much brighter than we think. Secondly, we should be teaching them atomic theory. And thirdly, that the benefits of this would be vast, bigger than the mining boom, just to speak economically, and more sustainable too. Now, this is at odds with current educational practice. So I've got a, some evidence in a one-minute classroom video here, uh, which I'd like to screen now to back it up. It's a bit wobbly. The video, not the evidence. see they love it as well, that's the other thing. Um, now these kids are in years three and four and we normally teach this stuff at year 11 and 12 and not only that but most kids don't take chemistry past year 10 so they miss out pretty much completely. Now if you think that young kids can't understand atomic theory then you're in good company because national curricula worldwide don't teach it, they exclude it from the primary school curriculum and nobody does it. So why not? Well, it's probably traceable back to the 1960s to a child developmental psychologist, Jean Piaget, who said that kids need to be about um, 12 to 14 before they can understand the abstractness of the microscopic scale of atoms. But I think this video and our fresh understanding of brain plasticity we should actually go back and retest our kids' abilities, and I think we'll come to the opposite conclusion. 
So why atomic theory? What's so special about it? Well, I would argue that atomic theory is science's biggest idea. Uh, Richard Feynman, the legendary physicist and perhaps the rock star of science, not Brian Cox, <laughs> he, he, he's just a real rock star, um, has this to say about it. So do I, can you click that on for me? Yep, thanks. Uh, Richard Feynman says that if all, knowledge was, all scientific knowledge was wiped out and we only had one idea and one sentence to hand on to our kids, what would it be? And he says it's atomic theory because it would best repopulate and regenerate scientific knowledge for future generations. And he says this because it's, it's a seed idea. Uh, atomic theory is as though it's um, the parent idea and all of the other sciences are its children. They flow from it. I might ask for the next one too, if you can. Thanks. So what I've got here is I'm showing scientific knowledge as a tree with atomic theory as the, 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 the trunk of the tree. And all of the other sciences, thermodynamics, electrochemic, electrochemistry, proteins, genetics, are like the leaves of the tree. Now that's not to say that, um, that atomic theory is more complicated than the other sciences, but it's an earlier idea. It's as though genetics and semiconductors and phase changes have their common ancestor in atomic theory. This could be a kind of an evolutionary tree. And that means that it's, it actually makes um, atomic theory the best way to start teaching science to the, for the kids. It, it's the best organising principle for them. And importantly, it's the best uh, sequence, learning sequence, in which they should start. And that would make science, it actually makes science learning much easier for them. Not harder, easier and more logical. So the, so my philosophy then is that we should be teaching the big concepts first and organise all of the derivative concepts around it. And in this way the kids um, get a better grasp and, and actually see the interrelationship between the various sciences they can kind of migrate more fluently around the canopy of the tree without getting lost. In this way, if we teach science in this way, then we can take our kids further and faster and deeper in their mastery of science. Well, who benefits? Well, we all do. Uh, the kids, the nation and the planet. The kids get better jobs, uh, they're more intellectually satisfied, and they're more prepared for modernity. Um, the nation, um, well, we're, we're, the nation will be, nationally, we will be building the intellectual capital of our young people to drive future innovation and productivity. And this it makes it really the, the best um, alternative to the mining boom. Again, just speaking economically, uh, cause, because of broad, uh, much broader benefits than, than just the economic side of it. And um, th it's as though, really, our young people's minds are this vast resource, national resource, just under the surface, that's waiting to be tapped, and much more easily than coal and iron ore, in fact. Um, and it's, it's not only that, but it's a, it's a sustainable resource. It's a resource that grows with time. It's... Um, in a way, it's, it's better than the magic pudding because the magic pudding only replaced itself. This one grows and the more you exploit it, the more you get. So that's, that's the, the beauty of human resources. Now, I'd like to wrap up by bringing Marcel onto stage. Now, Marcel uh, couldn't be here personally because her mum thought she'd be too young. Uh, so, here she is in a video. How would we make it? You stick one proton in the, in the centre of the nucleus and one electron on the first shell. Exactly. This yeah. is neon. Number? Ten. Number ten. Okay, now number eleven. What's number eleven? Sodium. 
sodium, and so it has 11 electrons. So where would they, its electrons go? Will go onto the onto the third shell, shell two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and one in the third shell. Brilliant, you got it. Let's put as many hydrogens as you can on an oxygen atom. Good. What's the formula for that molecule? The formula is H2O, yeah. which is water. It is. And what about carbon? What if you stuck them all on carbon? It will be CH4. Really? That's it? Can you make your own molecule? Okay. See if you can put a few carbons <laughs> and oxygens and nitrogens and hydrogens. Put some double bonds in there too. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't she great? Uh, Marcel is special, but there are a lot of Marcels in Australia. And I think what Marcel is really telling Dr Piaget, the clinical psychologist who said that we could only learn if we were 10 to 12 or 14, is that the best age to learn atomic theory is when you're losing your front teeth. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ian. That was great. I liked a bit with the sodium atom. Tell me more about the sodium atom. Tell me more. That was great.